start with a simple one. Let's just do the summation where i equals, uh, we'll just start easy with 1, and we'll go, to, uh, we'll go to 3 right now. And so on the inside, I'll just put 2i plus 1. So, <clears throat> what I'll explain is how you solve this problem in two different methods. So what you need to do is, the first method is where you break it up using these properties and then solve for uh, the inside and the variable. So let's try that method first. So we break this up. Now remember, we're using rule number one right here. We're able to break it up into two parts. So we have the same index, i equals one to three. But this goes two i plus another summation, i equals one to three, with a, just a one right there. So now what we did was we broke this up into two separate summations. Now using our rule number two, where we have a situation where we have two times some, something, we can bring this two out in front, just like we did here, where we brought the r out in front of the summation. So the way that'll look is when we break this up, we bring the two right here, i equals one, same, same thing up top. Now there's just an i right there. And then we just bring this down. i equals one, three, with a one. <clears throat> so now let's explain how do we solve the summation. So this is where it goes into the interpretation of what is summation notation. So summation just means that you plug in a 1 into the variable first, then you plug in a 2 into the variable, then you plug in a 3 into the variable. You add those answers together, then you multiply that final answer by 2. So how does that work? So summation of 1 plus 2 plus 3. That's what this part right here means. The sum of these three answers together you multiply by 2. So again, what's in parentheses represents this summation here. So the answer to this, this inside is 6, and you multiply it by 2, you get 12. So now what we just did was we solved for the left summation. But we know we have this right summation left over. So here, this is a 1, this is a number. It isn't a variable. So you can't plug 1 into 1, that doesn't make sense. You only plug in your numbers into variables. So the way this will work is, as long as your index is indexed from 1 to 3, as long as that's true, 1 to some number, then all you do is you take the constant that you have here, and you multiply it by the number up top. So 1 times 3 will equal 3. And so that's where that came from. So your final answer in this case is 15. So the answer to this sole summation should be 15. So that was the first method. That was where you use these properties. But let's say you didn't know these properties specifically. Let's say you just wanted to solve this right here by plugging in 1 into the variable, 2 into the variable, and 3 into the variable. So you can do that as well, because that is the definition of summation notation. So you do 2 times 1 plus 1, and then you do 2 times 2 plus 1, and finally 2 times 3 plus 1. So the answer to each of these this is 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And we get the same answer, 15. So, those are the two ways that you can solve these problems. The reason why it's important to know these properties is because your question will not always be this simple. You'll probably have more complicated questions that you need to deal with, and you'll have to use these properties in order to solve them.